Hi everyone, welcome to Dave's Bonsai. On today's episode, it's the calm after the storm. Yeah, it's the day after Christmas. It's the big build up and then the big, ugh, everything's done. The house is a mess. Presents have been opened. The food and drinks have been consumed. And now it's time to think about cleaning up. But before I clean up the house, I just need to sit down in the plant room and do a little cleaning and better working on some bonsai trees. Yeah, the plant room's a little bit of a mess down here. I gotta sweep the floor, pick up a few things, move some things around, and my goal today is to actually hang a new light that I got from Candace. But today I do wanna start off with working on a forest. Yep, surprise, surprise, Dave's gonna work on another forest. So, there's a couple episodes ago, several ago now, I put some holes into this blue pot right here. So as I move these cuttings over here, I can show you the five holes that I put into this tray. This is a really nice uh, old uh, Japanese tray. It's got the stamp in it and everything on the back here. It's got the uh, mark right there. And I got five holes in there for some drainage, so we're gonna go ahead and put some drainage screens in there. And I got this uh, threesome from uh, Henry. So from Henry to Bonsai, my good friend Henry, he's been giving me a lot of stuff lately. Right before the holiday season, our last holiday get-together, our dinner, potluck, we uh, got that from Henry, a nice cascading pot, another one that could be used for a cascading pot right here. So I got that pot, nice drainage hole in there, that'll be for a big tree as well. So a couple of new pots that Henry, he just, he's such a giving guy. So I have this threesome from um, Henry that has a little bit of a uh, beginning uh, uh, a thickness of trunks, if you if you will. Now, yes, there's still sticks in pots, and a lot of people remember will say, "Hey, why, Dave, people have actually said this to me several times. Hey, Dave, why are you sticking sticks in pot and putting them in bonsai soil, and it's just slowing everything down?" I like to remind people often that I really thoroughly enjoy the process of bonsai, slow and sure as it is in a pot, and um, I, I like to put some trees into pots earlier than probably most. So remember, if you want to thicken up your tree, put it in a bigger pot, put it in the ground if you can, and it's going to thicken up that trunk. You're going to let it grow, cut it back, let it grow, cut it back. You'll get a thick trunk, and then you can start your trees. If you want one tree to thicken up, you're going to go ahead and do that. But I generally, as a rule of thumb, seem to put trees in pots probably earlier than most. And I do that because I really want to control the growth from the get-go. And I seem to be able to control my growth the best when I have it in bonsai soil. I know how it's draining. I know when I'm watering the tree. And I, and I just feel more comfortable that way. And with a forest planting, unlike one single tree, these are just going to be trees that are going to go pretty much straight up. And we're going we're gonna to go ahead and trim them and prune them and make them look like a forest. I'm not looking for this massive one thick girth tree. So I have a little bit of different thickness with this main big kind of mother trees, if you will, and all these little babies that we can put around it and make a little forest planting. But a forest planting, yeah, I can put this in this pot right now, super skinny little twigs in pots, and they're just gonna grow and mature together and hopefully become a really grand forest one day. But I can control every step of the way, cut every branch, twist them around, do what I want. Um, and yeah, am I in a hurry to get it a big, thick, massive forest in a couple of years? No. Bonsai for me is all about the journey and I enjoy this part and um, yes, I also still am learning patience with bonsai and we have to be patient and let things do their, do, let the trees do their thing. Um, but in this case, let's get working on the day after Christmas, a super quiet mellow day with all the kids out of the house, cleaning to do, but first we're going to clean up this.
We are all set with the drainage screens here in the tray and now I'm going to get the bonsai soil all wet. Quick shout out to my mother-in-law. I got these uh, nice uh, flexible baskets for work in the yard and of course in my PSGF and in the plant room. So I have the smaller bucket in the plant room right now and then I have the bigger one in the PSGF and I'm able to, you know, if I'm, she uses these for when she's deadheading and, um, and just picking weeds and that kind of stuff and then dumping them into the compost pile. So when my clippings from in the, in the plant room here, I'll be able to put my clippings in here. So I added some water here to the bonsai soil in this bucket here. And the reason why I did that is if you're working on a planting, especially if you have trees that are young and don't have a lot of roots, if you use wet, your small soil wet, it's all wet down, it, you can make little mounds and you can uh, play with your trees and move them around and it, they stay up. It kind of holds it up like it's a little bit more of a putty instead of the dry soil that just falls apart, right? So you get some moisture on this uh, soil and it sticks together a little bit better. So now we have our wet soil. And so here we have everything all set to go. We have all our trees. So now we're gonna take apart the trees and kind of see what the root systems look like. So here are the trees of the first pot here. And they're all sticking to the uh, bottom drainage screen. So I know we have some roots on these trees. So that's super fabulous. For those to stick up like that, we know there's uh, root growth. Now the trick about this is look at that. They stuck all inside here. And I don't want to ruin as, I want to save as many roots as possible. So I want to go as gently, but look at all those roots down there circling around the tree. And so there's plenty of root growth here. Nice, nice to see. And so there we go. We have some nice roots there. We have plenty of roots to put in our planting. So I'll put that down in the pot. Look at that one. I'll put that down in the pot and this one looks to be Nice as well. Got a nice base on that little trunk there and some roots growing fine. And then this little one right here. And yep, that one's got some roots wrapping around too. Good. We've got some nice root systems there. And look at there. We have the same scenario. We have all our trees clinging to the bottom of that. So we can recycle that soil. And we can pull out these trees gently. There we go. We have plenty of roots on that one. We have no leaves on that one, but look at the root system and look right there. There's growth right there and there. This one's still alive. We'll put it in the forest and we'll see if we can get some growth on that one. You never know. There's a nice, look at that really long root, right? We're going to cut that off right there and we've got some other feeder roots. And this one's really, really in this mesh right here. This one really. So these were planted too close down to the mesh. So there's another good tip for everybody. If you're going to put a whole bunch of cuttings from your tiger bark ficus or any tree, and you're gonna put them down into this new pot. I meshed these pots because they have some pretty big holes. Let me show you that. See those big holes down there? My little fine soil would have fallen right through there. So I put this little mesh at the bottom and then you stick your uh, cuttings in and if you go all the way down and touch the bottom of the, of the pot and you have mesh down there, well the mesh was right there. And look at that nice radial root pattern. That's really nice, but it was all in the mesh. So I hope I didn't disturb too much of that pulling it out. Now we'll cut this off right there and we'll have a really nice radial root pattern there. Now these trees came from Henry uh, over a year ago, I think, and I put them in my pot after the pot he had them in. Oh, there's a nice long root. Look at that long root there. Um, and I put these three together like I was gonna go for this kind of uh, triple trunk and maybe they would grow and fuse together in the future. And um, I, I could have kept that as that uh, growth pattern and I'm still gonna keep them together. They're interwoven right now, although I could separate them. But I still like the idea of these tree in the forest kind of being like that mother tree concept. So the mother tree, if you want to go uh, read a good book, I mentioned that in one of my last videos. Um, we're starting the year doing a new feature on the show and it's called Shinrin Yoku. We'll get to that a little bit later in today's show. But for right now, I wanted to talk about that mother tree book again. If you get the book called Finding the Mother Tree, it's a fantastic read. And usually there's a mother tree in the forest and everything else is secondary to that tree and tell that mother tree if, if it does or when it does uh, perish, then other trees can kind of take over. So we don't need that long winding root. So these have some nice roots here. We have some really nice fine feeder roots on this little uh, forest of three. <laughs> so this will be the central 
feature of this forest. I want this three trees from Henry to be nice and focused in the center of this planting. And we'll trim this up a little bit as we get to planting. And we're gonna leave it as a three planting. I'm just gonna try to separate them and put them in a good position. And we'll shove some rocks in there to have this grow as a triple. And it has this, this bang tree right there. Look at the nice nabari on that one right there. If you can kind of see that tree right there. That's super nice. Nice little wide section right there. It's flaring out real nice. So we're gonna have a nice little forest planting with this kind of mother trees, plural, in the center, uh, center left, maybe center right of the, of the composition. And that'll be the main, the main focal point of this planting with all the young trees trying to grow around it. So nice roots from the tiger bark ficus. I think I had about 99% success. I think of the 20 trees I put in here, or uh, 15 trees, or whatever, I had one die. So you know, 90, 95% accuracy rate with the growth process, which is really nice. Success. And then we have our roots uh, grown really nicely with the threesome here from Henry. And that's gonna be the main focus of this forest. This is gonna be a three, a three tree mother tree situation, like kind of right off, you're not in the center, but off maybe over something like this. And we'll separate these two trees kind of like this right here is what I was thinking. And so I've got the really nice flared tree up in front. I could put that one over here as the flare, so, uh, and that, that, that could be another possibility. I kind of like that as well. Yeah, so that's one possibility, or if this flare trunk is over here, I kind of like that too, although this branch kind of comes in our face over here, but this one leans really nicely to the left this direction. And this branch could go someday for other branches. I like the swerve of this back branch too going that way. So I kind of like that right here. It's going to be that or this, but this does lean really nice that way. This branch does as well, but we can, I think I'm going to go this way. And then it has that nice flared trunk kind of in the center of the composition. I think we'll do that. Okay. So we're going to put this one probably on the highest point off to the left here, just a little bit. I'm going to put that right there. I think I want it that high. I want it kind of on a hill. And as you can see already, this is wet soil. So look at how nice and mounded it stays up here. I want this to be a little bit more over here like that, I think. Like that. And we have our three tree. Now in bonsai with a single tree, we don't want a lot of branches crossing each other. But with a forest, they're all going to be tangled in there. We're going to have a lot of taller trees. Not as much curve and bend, but we want to place trees close together, far apart, but not really, we don't want it symmetrical. So I've said this before in forest plantings, but we don't want a tree and then an inch and a half a tree and an inch and a half a tree. We don't want that like that. So these two looking like they're closer together is totally fine with me. And this one just spreads out a little bit right there. So there is the big future mother trees, trace, three of them, um, the mother tree of this forest. And then the other trees are all the young brothers and sisters from these three sisters that uh, tried to compete for that mother tree status. And you know, when this gets bigger, I will have one of these three that'll probably be dominant over the other two anyway, and it'll be a big, big tree. And these will be close seconds. It could be this back one, or it could be this guy in the front right there. So I kind of like that the way it is right there. <clears throat> and I can make adjustments as we go. So now that we have the first uh, major planting of this forest in place, my only question now, is it too far to the left? Do we want it a little bit more centered? Because here is the center pot right here. So we're just off a little bit. We get a whole bunch of trees around here. We've got about 14, 13 trees here. We're gonna put about five or six or seven here, and then about nine of them here. The fun thing about forests is you really can take your trees and you can stick them almost anywhere. So Again, most people can have a forest and have a super successful forest just by throwing a whole bunch of these twigs in a pot and you will have a forest in a couple of years, it'll get thicker, and it'll look fantastic. But a couple of things to keep in mind if you wanna make a better forest than just throwing them in anywhere. Here's the one with no leaves, we'll save that one for a little bit later here. But the one thing you still wanna consider with a forest is this. You do want different thicknesses together, uh, moving apart, separated, you, don't, you, know, you want different thicknesses, heights, and all that kind of stuff whenever you can. So again, these are cuttings from the mother tree, and uh, they have enough roots to sustain themselves and to continue to go now in what I'm going to do with a new forest planting. 
So as I trim some of the roots away from some of these longer ones here, um, we will go ahead and think about where they're going to fit in the grand scheme of things. So I don't have a lot of different thicknesses because this came from the same tree. But this right here, these two are different thicknesses. So maybe this one will take off and get much thicker than this one quicker, but we do have different thicknesses. So I will try to put this one a little closer to the main tree. This one's similar, and then this one's maybe the thinnest of these three. These two are awfully close though. Now let's check my other trees. Uh, again, kind of relatively thicker, relatively thicker, and relatively thicker. These might be good on this right side because they're all thicker trees, and then we'll put all these little ones around the mother tree. I think I'll do that. So I have three skinnier ones, and I have three kind of, I mean, we're talking fractions of millimeters here, but they hopefully will grow, and based on how I clip and grow these, I can determine which ones grow faster and slower and all that. So that goes back to my original statement. Why am I putting these little sticks and pots into a bonsai pot so young in their growing years? It's because of that control. I want to tell this forest planting what to do from the get-go. And so... I, from its very early stages right now today, I'm going to tell these things what to do and, and how to do it. Okay, so this is a nice small tree for out front here, I think. So I'm going to put this one out front. So right now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight trees in this clump right here. We're heavy on this side. We're gonna head over to that side. Um, and if I get some more tiger bark uh, ficus cuttings, I can certainly add that to this composition as we go down the road, down the pike here. Um, I think, you know, I'm okay with that forest planting. If I had three to five more trees, I'd make this thicker and maybe close off the trail, put a couple more small trees up here. But right now, with what I have, these are the clippings of the tiger bark ficuses, and we're gonna, just going to let this thing grow up and go crazy. And the nice part about me doing this in the plant room right now is these have no wires on them. They need to get established, their roots, and that'll do that in the plant room really nice and I don't have to worry about gale force winds or any storms, you know, coming through to wreak havoc on this planting. Okay, so we have our proposed front right there. A real nice group of trees right here with this path that kind of formed in here. And this is kind of the lead of the forest, the mother trees, if you will, and all the little ones growing next to it. We circle around to the right. Nice spacing in here too. If you look this way, we got a couple of a couple of them almost lined up this way, but then this staggered one here and here, and then the one out front, almost like bowling pins, if you will. And then the back here, I have to move this just a little bit, and then the back doesn't look too bad either. Nicely spaced. We've got uh, different thicknesses, slightly of trees, not a ton, mind you. And there we go. We have a tiger bark ficus that I think I can live with for its first planting. Now the question is, do I go in and give a couple little snips? And I think I might. So this one is just an old leaf that's drying up. I'm gonna cut that one off. I'm tempted to cut this one off over here, but it's the one that has the growth. So I'm gonna leave this one completely alone. This one here, I can go ahead and cut off this nub. And that one's a little loose. So that's the kind of one right there where we'd put a rock right here. Let's put a rock right there and hold that right there. This one's leaning out this way. I like it so far. I think I'm gonna cut the tip of this one off right there. And I'm gonna cut this inside leaf off just to allow more light through here and we'll just see where this tree goes. I'll cut off this inside leaf as well. Now this back one fell as well, so we're going to get another little rock back in here. And we're going to keep this one as straight up as we can. 
it's kind of fighting against this uh, mother tree right here. So actually we might put this rock here and squeeze her up a little bit. I think I like that. Yeah, get that one more straight up. So I've got this rock shoved in here, but then we'll go ahead and cut this little nub off here. Cut this inside leaf growth right here off. And we'll just kind of let this one kind of fall back this way more. And we'll just let it sit there naturally and see what it does. And now this uh, tree in the back here has a big branch growing towards the inside of the forest. We're gonna just cut that off right there. We just cut that big part of the tree off for this nice division here. We'll cut this inside leaf off right there. This big back one here to promote it growing to the right here or the forest left when you look at the front. So that one's in a nice spot right here. We have this stump down here. We can cut that off. There we go. And so that part of the forest is cleaned up. I think this one can still go maybe a little bit higher right there. Okay, so the, this side over here is fine. I think we'll leave that there for the moment. And then over here, we got this big tree here that's leaning towards the other forest. We'll just cut that back here. I'm going to cut a really big leaf off right there and an inside leaf right there. The trees are all gently placed into the forest. We've added a few rocks for stability and made a few initial trims to uh, guide this forest where I want to guide it. Let's give it a last spin here for you. Coming around to the right side here with a small forest of five on the hill. We've got the trail in the middle that has a little bit of indentation to give us some depth of field and some texture. The rocks will go away eventually. They're just holding the trees where I want them to be. So have some small rocks on hand. And again, make sure you wet your soil when you're doing these plantings because it makes them stay in place and then you can wiggle them around as you need to. Now, if the soil dries out and these trees start to wobble down, I'll just add more rocks. We can do that at any time and the rocks will go away again as the roots take hold. I have one more tree here that I see. I did not cut the tip off. Let's go ahead and cut this tip off to promote some energy down back to the roots and up and get some more uh, bifurcation, trifurcation, and all those splits and divides. Cut off these two big leaves just because I want a little more light going through there. And let us put the scissors down. We have the tiger bark ficus forest in the blue tray, ready to keep on the bench in the plant room and go crazy with growth as we get into uh, January and February with more light that I'll give the trees and maybe a little more heat as we get closer to February. I'm very pleased with the new tiger bark ficus forest. I do love my forests, and I'm going to start to tell you why. I mentioned it in the last episode, and I'm going to continue to mention it throughout the year and provide some quotes from some of my favorite books. So I brought a couple of those with me again today, and the one I'm going to quote from today is The Nature Fix. So this is from Florence Williams, The Nature Fix. Part of the nature fix is what's called forest bathing, or in Japan they call it Shinrin Yoku. It's not an aggressive hike where you got a backpack and you're camping for four or five days. It's going into nature, often just sitting down and just soaking it all in. The point really here is to get outside. First, I want to talk about George McCarran of the University of Sussex. Now, this is from The Nature Fix, and he basically created an app to find out how people will feeling at different times of the day. The surprising finding of this app from Mr. McCarran, the results were not who you were with, but where you are. So quote number one from page two, on average, this study from Mr. McCarran, participants were significantly and substantially happier outdoors in all green or natural habitat types than they are in urban environments. That's not really rocket science. We probably get that one, right? But I just want to kick this off with some of the basics. The next quote, the difference in joy that respondents felt in urban versus natural settings was greater than the difference they experienced from being alone versus being with friends. Again, from page two of The Nature Fix. Getting outside is so healthy for us. So much more info to share with you. If you want a couple of good reads this winter, especially if you're in the cold, snowy, well that doesn't include Minnesota right now, but pick up the nature fix and forest bathing, which is Shinrin Yoku. And so that brings us to our next edition of Shinrin Yoku. So I discovered a brand new path this year. This is a path in a park that 
I would drive by going back and forth to Stillwater with the kids, back and forth for years off of this road and this country area between some farms. And it's very funny, they just, or odd or ironic, they just put a Amazon plant down the road from this park. But I finally got to go check out this park and I wanna share it with you right now. My advice to you, whether you want it or not, is going to be to go out in nature as much as you can over the course of the new year 2024. Winter, spring, summer, or fall, get out for some Shinrin Yoku, which is forest bathing. And even though this can also provide some benefits to us working on trees, and you even looking at pictures of trees, we'll talk about that in future editions of Dave's Bonsai, get outside, breathe the air, a little forest bathing, Shinrin Yoku. And so we leave you today with my next edition of Shinrin Yoku out at Prairie Ridge Park near my home. Take care of you, take care of your bonsai, and we'll see you on the next one.